Um, yeah, so you're Lance. Yeah, I'm right. Lance. My name is Lance. Yes. Jeff, how's it going? All right. So my question, I give everyone universal question, what do you think happens after you die? The second part to it is, how did you get to your belief? You know, like, or doubt, wherever yeah. you're at with that, like, what would you say? You know, to be honest, I don't, I don't put a lot of thought into what happens after I die because there's so much stuff that I'm dealing with right now. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that I'm dealing with right now is my, my mother died uh, two years ago. And, you know, she had, uh, she had cancer. Yeah. And, you know, the thing with cancer is that, you know, it's, it, it kills a person. Yeah. You know, so, like, the last time that I saw her, you know, like, she, she was already gone. And, you know, the last, the last image that I have of her is, um, it's one of the made of her, you know, and, you know, just seeing her. Um, so in her case, you know, the physical body, it's ash. Right. And that's it. And, um, you know, outside of that, like the spirit, you know, Maybe there's an energy, and you can't you can't create or destroy energy, so maybe that energy uh -huh. goes somewhere. Um, I, I feel that no one knows what happens. You know, like they might think they know, and they might say they know, but no one's come back. Mm -hmm. So you know, I know some people might say, well, you know, they say this one dude did. But do we really know that he did? You know, like, I, for a long time, you know, like, probably in my 20s, I was, you know, thought of myself as agnostic. And, you know, I just saw, I've just seen in my own life and, like, around the world, you know, like, just uh, some of the not great things that religion has done. Yeah. Um, and, uh, grow up with a religion? Yeah, we, we, I went to Methodist school, or Methodist, my, my family, we went to a Methodist church, okay. and the thing of that is that, um, you know, the minister, you know, he, he helped save my, he helped save my family, you know, like, he saved my family's life because, um, when I was 13, my mom, she was really sick, and, you know, with the ambulances, they don't come out unless there's someone having a heart attack. Yeah. And the private ambulances back then, they wouldn't come out if you had if you don't have a credit card. And I was 13, and I didn't have no credit cards. church that was founded by people who were who were in, who, who, who came from a prosperity gospel background okay so you know prosperity gospel like Joel Olstein yeah anyone prosperity gospel it's like anyone who says you know you got to plant the seed yeah. if you want fruit to grow and if right. you eat the seed it's poison and I just don't have any respect for that train of thought. But the, the church that you were in was a reaction against that? Is that, is that what I'm hearing you say? No, the, the last church that I went to was a prosperity gospel they, church. They, they, like the, the, um, the minister, like his background, you know, the, his family was in prosperity in that yeah. train of thought. And so like he brought his uncle to preach a couple of times and that's when it really hit me, you know, like where they're coming, where they're coming. So they from. were they were promoting prosperity gospel. Uh, not 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 outright, not as much as I mean, they his wouldn't uncle call did. It that, you like, know? <laughs> his, well, his uncle, like his uncle, came out. He was like saying, the, you know, he was like right in it. 
Yeah. But like, you know, the guy who comes in, he, he doesn't, he doesn't put that out on the, on the window, you know, like right. with his preaching and everything. So it's like a lot more, a lot more stuff. So it sounds like you're in your experiences you have some really good experiences and some bad ones as far as like you don't believe in religion because of the, the bad things that have been done in its name but at the same time I don't believe, believe I don't believe that man can know who or what God is yeah and I would say that you know physicists who believe that there's a big bang you know that's that's probably the most valid concept that I've heard of. Yeah. You know. Um, so your your understanding is that God should be if God exists, he should be understandable. Or or provable, I guess. Well I think well like I guess in another way, you know, like God exists in everybody. You know, like everybody has everybody has a spirit or they have something within them that can help other people. You know, and and if you don't have that spirit inside of you, then you know you're living in a hell on earth. You know, if you're just living for yourself, and you know, you're would you say you have that spirit? Helping other people, just or hell on earth. That I'm, you, you're not going through hell on earth. <laughs> uh, well, I would say that you know, like I've found a certain level of success in my own life, and. I don't have a lot of means, and in the past few years, I've tried to give people opportunities that I wasn't handed, uh -huh. you know, because, like, I've been struggling to, like, get to a certain place for the past 10 years, and, you know, there were people that, like, you know, they were beside me, and they helped me, and they helped, you know, that passion get pulled along, mm -hmm. but... There wasn't someone that was already there who like held out their hand and like helped pull me up. You're not getting anything on a silver spoon. Yeah, silver you know. Platter, right? So like, I'm at a point now where you know I found a certain level of success that I'm happy about, and I've tried to create opportunities for people that wouldn't normally have been given an opportunity. So you're a good guy. <laughs> uh, it depends on who you ask. Yeah. So. Yeah. Because uh, cause when you started out, you said you don't really think much about life after death. You know, you're more concerned with this life. And what I've been finding is that people who don't think much about life after death pretty much feel like they got nothing to worry about. If there is a, a heaven and a hell to be had, they're pretty much going to heaven because they're pretty good people. I've met a lot of good people. Yeah, way. well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't presume that... I would presume, like, say, if, say, if, for sake of argument, say if there is a heaven or a hell, mm -hmm. I would presume where I'm going to end up, you know. Because that gonna, would be a presumptuous, kind of an arrogant thing. Yeah, and, you know, like, you got the whole Quaker religion, you know, and the Shakers that were like, they all thought they were just going to go to hell. Like, they're going to, you know, they're just, no matter what they do, they're just going to go to hell. Yeah. And they're just going to, like, keep pushing and praying that maybe they'll get into the, get into yeah. the you know. And with myself, you know, like say if I get on a plane, you know, rain noise. Say if I get on a plane, you know, I'm gonna say, you know, Lord Jesus, please absolve me of all my sins. Please forgive me for all the sins I've done. Uh -huh. You know, I'm gonna do whatever feels in my head that I remember from. Like the whole, you know, a no atheists in foxholes. Like it, when it comes down to it, you're gonna. I mean, you know. You're going to plead for God's mercy. For saying, yeah, you know, like, I mean, I, I believe in playing the odds. You know, like, don't put your eggs in all one basket. Yeah. And, you know, it's not going to hurt me to, like, to, like, you know, say that, I don't think. Yeah. You know, I mean, maybe I'll get in a darker hole in hell, you know, but. I want to, um, it's kind of cool, though, so I'm going to kind of make this short, but, um, I want to let you know that, so so I as a Christian, right, I do believe I'm going to heaven, but I don't believe it's because I'm a good person. 
Yeah. Well, and, I, and so, so I, don't, I don't believe I don't believe a person goes to heaven because they're a good person either. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just I wanted to I wanted to talk about that because because um there there is that misconception out there. A lot of people think well it's based on being, so what do you think of not necessarily what you believe, but what do you think the Bible teaches about who's going to heaven, who's not? The Bible says a lot of things. It depends on what side you want to read. Um, I mean, from, from the churches that I've gone to and stuff, it's like if you accept, you know, Jesus as your Savior, you know, that, that'll pretty much get you in. Mm-hmm. You know, so, you know, if I see a bunch of gangbangers driving down the street and they got their guns out, then I accept Jesus as my Savior. You know. Like kind of a last minute kind of a, yeah. Well, I mean, and in the Bible, there's a guy that was hung with Jesus on the cross. You know, there's two of them. Yeah. And one was mocking him, but the other one, I think the other one started out mocking him because in one gospel it says both of them were. Yeah. But then apparently he he uh, he, he, he trusted him and he said, remember me. And Jesus said, you'll be with me in paradise. Yeah. He didn't have any kind of time to prove he was a good person. He just put his trust in Jesus. So um, my my feeling is that if people have multiple opportunities in their life to put their trust in Jesus, they're probably not going to do it at the very last second. Like yeah. that. Well, but I mean, there have been plenty of possible. moments. There have been plenty of moments when I've been in church where I did that, and there have been plenty of moments like before the plane takes off the ground that I've done that. Yeah. You know, so. Um, you know, it's not for me to judge what's going to happen next. Yeah. The um. Uh, but the confidence of so so I guess what I'm saying is there's a certain amount of confidence of going through life and not worrying about eternity. That it, it really is based on what you believe. You yeah. know, as far as I think I got that figured out. I'll just concentrate on the here and now, you know? For me, it's it's like, if there's an eternity after this, I'm gonna be there a lot longer than here. It makes a lot of sense to be concerned about that. Um, but at the same time, my confidence comes in what Jesus did on the cross, not in what I can do, right? So there was a point in my life where I trusted Christ. He, he's changed my life, he's been changing my life ever since. So that now this life becomes just a chance to live out that gratitude. You know, he saved me. How can I thank him? Yeah. I can't do anything else to be saved. I'm already saved, right? So it's so it's like so so it makes this life even more important because of what Jesus did for my future. Yeah. If that makes sense. Well, I feel that uh, I feel that since since uh, humankind's evolved, you know, we've been trying to look for certain patterns, you know, and you can see patterns of anything, and sometimes there's nothing really there. Yeah. As far as, like, just in, oh, so like in, uh, so in religion you're talking about? I mean, in your life, you know, oh. you might see a certain pattern or a shape to your life, but sometimes just things just happen that way you know and then in retrospect you know you see something there that it just would have happened anyway yeah or it would have happened a different way oh you know like for example uh you know i got a buddy and um you know, I worked with them on a project, and we put it out, and some people saw it, and it just so happened that he was at the right place at the right time, and now he's in a much bigger project, and, you know, he's on the way to, like, really getting somewhere, uh-huh. and um, that was just the work of, you know, him being who he is, following his path. And, you know, following his, following his bliss, following his passion, and then that leading to other opportunities down the road. But you could have been there. But you don't feel like... I, well, I was, I was one of the things that helped him along that path. Yeah. You know, him, because, like, I, I just met him through a Craigslist ad, you know, so, like, he oh, just okay. reached out to me, 
totally random, you know, and we worked on this thing and, you know, put it out there. And then we did some more work together and now that's leading to him having opportunities that, you know, maybe he wouldn't have had. Yeah. But then again, he's the type of person that what, you know, he knows, he knew what he wanted and so he reached out, you know, maybe he would have reached out to a different Texas dad and had, you know, a similar path, just, yeah. you know, different, different, different route. So, do you think, um, uh, if, is there is a, any possibility, like, so you've heard the, like, the gospel message, you understand the whole idea about heaven and hell and a judgment day and Christ's role in that, right? Yeah. Um, were you to die today and wake up and be standing before God and it is your time of judgment, you know, what, uh -huh. what do you, do you foresee, you know, like, I guess what I'm saying is not that you believe it, but if you found out it was all true, would you be in heaven or would you be in hell? Like, what, what do you, how do you see that? I mean, right now, um, right now in this moment, I don't really, I don't really put a lot of thought into that. You know, what, what you said about Judgment Day and everything put me more in mind of what's happening in Israel and the fact that, you know, in Israel, there are people in the West Bank that are being killed. And, you know, you've got a lot of religious people that are just like letting that happen. And you've got some religious people who believe that, you know, that the West Bank needs to be cleared out for certain things to happen. You know, like there are people that believe in the apocalypse gospel and believe that, you know, once that nation is all, you know, just one thing, that, you know, that's when it's yeah. all going to happen. I mean, that's... And in the meantime, people are dying. That's, you know... That's one of many horrible things that are happening in yeah. the world. So... Um, and it's good to be concerned about that. So, like, you know, as far as, like, say, if I love talking to God, you know, like, I'm like, hey, man, I accept Jesus as my Savior. Tell me what you want to do, you know? So... But, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm going to worry about that too much. We'll see if it happens. <laughs> we'll see when I believe it. True. You know, the Bible, <laughs> the Bible puts it more in terms of we have a day of accountability, judgment. We have the opportunity to kind of settle out of court to make our peace with God. Yeah. Not as something that, you know, like we, we prove our goodness maybe by being concerned about different causes like that or doing this or that, but, but, but understanding, yeah, I have sinned. I do deserve to be punished. Jesus took my, my punishment for me. On Judgment Day, I want, I want what he's done on my behalf to be credited to my account. Yeah. And, and am I concerned about... So, so that's what I did, you know, it's, and it's not something I, like, I even thought it through. It's more like I heard the gospel preached and found myself responding to it. It was, you know, I can't even take credit for it, to, yeah. be, to be honest. But it's affected my life to the point where, yes, I am concerned about um, the poor, the oppressed. The Bible is all the way through, you know. It's, you know, that's true religion. You yeah. care about widows and orphans and their distress, you know. Yeah. Um, so if, if you're going to... If we're gonna love God, and you know, like Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments, right? Commandments are all through the Bible. Number one, I better start reading the Bible so I can understand his commandments if I want to really express my love to him. Yeah. And then I better start following them. But it's not to earn heaven, it's more a response to having been saved. And yeah, am I, am I concerned about it? I mean the world is overwhelming, so the situation in Palestine is another one of those situations that I kind of feel powerless about, but whatever well, I, think, my power, I, I, think, I think that I think that one thing that people can do is they can start talking talking about it. Yeah, just um, you know there is there is a congresswoman, yeah. uh, I think her name is Congresswoman Amon, and uh, she had a statement out about it and that led to a lot of controversy and she you know, she put out a statement responding to it. Oh, and, just recently. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, I think that's one of the benefits of these times is that, you know, people are starting to wake up about, you know, how wrong certain things are. Um,
and that, you know, people are more active to take there. action. Yeah. And, and that's, to me, that's what life is all about, is, is taking action, living out our gratitude, as opposed to, you know, like, am I going to be involved in different social... I, I've met a lot of atheists who believe they're much better than any religious people because they oh, don't... No. They don't have the the threat of hell or the reward of heaven to motivate them. They're just good people on their own, yeah. and they're no, committed there's... to this cause or that cause, and they're able to kind of like look down their nose at religious people because they're doing what they do mm -hmm. for no reason, just because they're good people. You yeah. Know? Well, and, there's there's a lot of bad atheists out there, and I, you know I don't think that an atheist should wear that as a you know badge of pride. Um, I do got to say, though, that, you know, like the atheists, I don't, as far as I know, they weren't involved in, you know, like, genocide in America. I'm pretty sure that the atheists weren't involved in, you know, conquering, you know, Mexico and killing all the, the Aztecs and all that. I mean, there's a time when, you know, when uh, most uh, people had some kind of an awareness of God, did a you, lot in God's name. You don't see a lot of atheists, you know putting on vests and bombing places, you know, because they're upset about something. Right. You know, so. Um, Although it was secular humanism, atheism, that led to more deaths in the, in the 1900s, 20th century, than all the religious wars combined, if you really want to look at it that way. Well. Communism, atheism. I don't think I, I don't think that the Nazis were atheists. That's but I, Nazis. I won't argue. I, I won't argue against the idea that a lot of harm has been done in the name of religion. No, uh -huh. no doubt about it. So, yeah. yeah. So I don't, I don't need to go there. I, I, I understand that. One of the things that's interesting you began by pointing out the harm that's done in the name of religion, but then also some of the good people that you've met, and. The interesting thing is, what we judge, the way we judge people, whether they're religious, you know, in a bad way or in a good way, is how close do they come to Christ's teachings? And if they come close to His teachings, they're not going to be doing the the harm that they do, mm -hmm. you know. So, so He becomes our standard, you know, by like, is a Christian a good Christian or a bad Christian? Well, how close do they follow Christ's teachings, you know? And so, for me as a Christian. Um, that he would be my my goal. I want to be more like him, or not not in the that he's the son of God sort of way, but yeah. more like following him more closely, you know. And I think as I do that, um, I can begin to battle against the idea that a lot of harm has been done in the name of religion. You know, the, the more I the more I and more more the more we can follow Jesus, the less harm we're gonna do for. <laughs> Yeah. For Christianity, you know. So the problem with ugly Christians is they're not Christ-like. And then there's a lot, I, I believe, you know, the whole, it, there's a Scotsman fallacy, like, he's no true Scotsman. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. They're not real Christians. A lot of people have grown up with a Christian background. And I taught, you know, like, in these conversations. But they don't live it. They don't live it, and they don't even understand it. So I say, like, how can you know you're going to go to heaven? They believe you're going to heaven. Well, I'm a Christian. Well, how do you know you're going to heaven? Because of all the good I do. I pray all the time. I go to church. And, and they don't even understand that, no, it's, it's what Jesus did on the cross that saved us, you know? So a lot of people don't even examine their own beliefs that they grew up in, you know? So I, I try to give people friendly reminders <laughs> to do that. <laughs> yeah. So... I appreciate the conversation. All right, man. <laughs> What's your name again? So, Jeff. Jeff. Yeah. All right. You got my card. I'd love to talk more. Uh, I got your blog spot. Yeah. On my phone. Any uh, any comments? Positive, negative? I believe you would you would really provide some constructive feedback. So. With your uh, experience and everything. Well, do you want to shut that down? Yeah, but I'm I'm just saying like if once you look at the blog spot or anything, oh, like, okay. yeah, just yeah. feel free to jump in there and